Hello and welcome to Windy Wednesday live with Adrenogen. Hi everybody, how's it going? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm coming from Bozeman, Montana today to talk with you about bar grip. So uh, let's get into my presentation. One of the key things to mastering snow kiting is knowing how to hang on to our bar right? Because that's how we're going to learn how to fly the kite. And so today um, I'm going to talk to you all about bar grip, where to put your hands on the bar and how to hold the bar for different situations. So for those of you who know me, hi, thanks for coming back. And for those of you who are just joining me, my name is Jenny Milton, aka Adrenogen, because I've been into adrenaline sports all my life. Um, I've been snow kiting for over 20 years and have a huge passion for teaching others to fly kites on snow and water as well. I'm an IKO and KA certified kite instructor, and I've done a bit of competing in my time um, in kite surfing in the waves and also in snow kiting as well. Um, I've been a ski instructor, a backcountry guide, I'm a super nerdy gear tech and um, of course best friends with the wind that I have a lot of fun with, snow kiting and a lover of sexy snowstorms. So hi everybody. So where do we put our hands on the bar? Well great question. So here's a few tips for you. You always want to have an even placement of the bar. Right, so either wide or narrow, wherever you're gonna put them, you wanna make sure that they're even on the bar rather than having one in the center and one on the outside. We wanna have a nice even grip. Now we wanna have a kangaroo grip, putting our hands over the bar like a kangaroo. Um, that's not just in Australia, everywhere that we kite. <laughs> that kangaroo grip is going to work in most situations. We can even have our thumb on the top or underneath, depending on the situation, how tired your hands are getting and things like that. We also want to have a nice light grip. It can be very easy to be hanging on super tight and all our muscles flexing when we're first learning. We want to learn to relax the fingers, have a nice a fluid grip so that we can move our hands side to side. And of course, we're not hanging on too tight. Now we can have a nice close grip to the center of the bar for stability. And then we can also have an, a wide grip which makes the kite more reactive. And we also want to find a really good sort of confidence flying that kite with one hand and, and where are we going to put our hand on the bar for that. So let's look a little bit more closely <laughs> at the kangaroo grip. Now you'll occasionally see some pros flying with one hand underneath, but I really recommend sticking with the kangaroo grip for most of the time unless you, you're getting sore arms, your wave rider, some certain situations. If you're in the under grip, great, but when you're learning I would recommend having that kangaroo grip for most of the time. Now you're going to see most people flying with their hands in the center of the bar for most of the time. And that's a great place to have it for having the kite nice and stable. Now when we're learning we want to have the kite stable we also want to have the kite stable when we're jumping and doing freestyle maneuvers so that the kite doesn't oversteer. Um, now when we've got our hands nice and narrow, that close grip, you'll see that my, my hands are in like a triangle, my elbows are in, it's a really nice stable grip, especially when you're doing tricks and you're starting to spin. So that's a really nice strong grip to get into although we still want to have that light fingers, right? This grip is also going to be good for high winds, right? When the kite's becoming unstable in the high winds, we can increase its stability a little bit by keeping our hands nice and narrow. Um, on a smaller kite, again, they tend to be a little twitchy, so we might want a narrower hand grip. Now, when we're flying with one hand, as you can see in the picture there, I'm going to be flying with one hand that's very close to the center. I can't, I don't think I've, I fly very often, I don't think at all with my hand wide on the bar. It's always nice and narrow, just like in, in the picture there. Um, and then you've got, a, you know, a few, few options um, of either using your thumb across the bar, or you will see a few people putting the, uh, their throw between their fingers. I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest. I've seen some rope burn and it can get caught in your ski gloves. So I really recommend having your hand nice and close to center and you can pop your thumb 
out there to have a little bit more control of the bar to push the opposite way. Now when our hands are close to the center, only sort of disadvantage is that it's much harder to turn the kite. So there's gonna be situations when we really want to, uh, you know, make sure we can turn the kite nice and fast. So by having a wider grip to the outside, kite's gonna be faster turning. So when's that going to be good? That's going to be great when it's lighter winds. And we really need to have that piston arm frame. So we're really moving the kite in or able to get it to turn, to create more power in that lighter wind. We're also going to have our hands maybe wider when we're doing things like a down looping maneuver, which I use to go up the mountain all the time. We need that kite to, to turn fast, to pivot. And so I might have a wider hand grip in order to pull in, to get that kite to to turn faster. Um, when we've got our hands nice and wide, we're gonna be more aggressive in our maneuvers. The kite's going to react a lot faster. Um, we might also have our hands wide if we are underpowered on the kite. And you can see here in this picture, right, that my hands are actually wide, but I'm jumping. Didn't I just say in the last slide that if we're jumping, we should have a narrow grip? Well, I can tell that because my hands are nice and wide on that, that photo, I must have been a little underpowered on the mountain that day and really had my hands wide in order to send the kite to get a bigger jump. So I hope you have enjoyed these bar tips. Um, it's really important to have a good bar grip. Know that we have a, a narrow grip. We have a neutral grip in the center, which I spend a lot of time there because then we can go either way. We can then choose to go wider or narrower. But if you're learning, you're doing jumps, it's high wind, have it narrow. And um, I hope that this has helped you build your skills for your next snow kiting adventure. So thanks for joining me today on Windy Wednesday Live with Adrenogen. Thanks for watching so much and I will see you next week for Windy Wednesday. See you then.